Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing, and today we're going to do another conventional jig. In this case, it's going to be a marabou jig, and it's uh, based on my uh, saltwater weemer, my brown trout weemer, similar idea. And the thing about this type of jig is that the use of marabou allows us to fish this on a straight retrieve. You know, we normally think of jigging always moving the rod tip. But with a material like marabou that moves very well, you can run this on a straight retrieve and that marabou will just be fluttering like mad, so will the flash. And it's a quite a great uh, fish attractor without having to do any jigging motion at all. So if you're in a situation where a straight retrieve will work, uh, then you can use this and it will get down. You can get it down around the stones. Uh, you know, don't worry about hanging up too much and uh, still fish effectively on a straight retrieve. So let's get going. Take a look at the one I've got in the vise right now. Uh, you can see I've got a, a red stripe on it. Uh, I added that afterwards. We'll do that in another video. I'll talk about how to add color to uh, a fly like, uh, sorry, a jig. I'll make that mistake a lot. To a jig uh, as a, like a little bit of an attractor. It, it imitates the gills. When the gills flare on a fish when it's trying to escape a predator, they see that red. So that's what that is meant to represent. So the jigs I'm using are from a company called Freedom. Uh, and you can see there's three in a pack. They've got nice eyes. These are the one eighth ounce. Uh, they look big, but they're not lead. I, they're, I think they're like a, um, what would you call it? A white metal, pot metal. So let's get started. And I'll put one in the vise here. And you can see it normally comes with uh, barbs to hold on the bait or the soft plastic. Uh, in this case, I've taken most of the barb off. We want to get them out of the way. You don't need them for uh, when you're tying stuff on. Now, you could leave the barbs on and try to work the material around it. That's a bit of a fiddle, so I don't bother. My thread is this olive color. It's uh, a six, uh, but uh, you can use a, a three as well. Threes are fine. The three is a bigger thread, thicker thread, stronger thread. Now the hackle and also sort of the body is going to be this nice white marabou. You want a feather that looks like that. Some of the feathers can be quite ugly when you get a pack of marabou. So you pick one out and f try and find a nice one like that. And you can see I've pulled off a bit at the end so I have a, a spot to grip when I wind it on. And I'm going to use this nice uh, lateral scale for the flash. This looks great in the water. And I'm going to use this grayish olive uh, for the wing. So let's get started and we'll tie on our thread. I'll work it just past that first barb. Now I'm going to stroke the barbs back and you can see I've just left the, the tip in place. I'll bring my thread four to that point. I'll wind the tip in. Now the tips on marabou are quite fragile, so be careful. Now I'm going to wind my thread forward. Of course your marabou will always get in the way. This is where the bodkin comes in handy. Just pick that one out of there. If it wants to come out, let's say get it out of there. There we go. You're going to trap a few barbs. Don't worry about it. Just a half hitch to hold it in place. Now I'm going to show you how I use my rotary vise. Rotary vices are more expensive than regular vices, but if you happen to get a rotary vice, here's how you would use it. I'll take my hackle pliers. Okay, we're gonna, you know, I'm not gonna assume everybody's got a rotary vice, but I'll show you how one works. So I'm stroking these barbs back, and I'll begin to wind, and just keep stroking them, and I will bring each wrap in front of the previous. Again, just stroke them down. And you can come in with your bodkin and pick out some trapped barbs. Now at this stage I can tie this off. Now you can see that there's a gap there. And we can fill that gap with a second feather. Now I made this one a little bit smaller. 
so uh, it doesn't take up as much room. Again, we're going to tie it in by the tip. Fold the tip back. Now I'll show you how you would do it if you're not using a rotary vise. I'll grab, get my hackle pliers, grab hold, go very gently with this first turn. It's easy to break these quills. Now we just start stroking these fibers back. And if you find you're trapping, just come in with your bodkin, pick them out. Okay, now we can come in with our thread. Try to get as much of the barbs out of the way as you can. And just wind that in. Now, pull your barbs out of the way. Come in with your scissors and trim that off. Now what we can do is I'll just push this all back. And build up some thread in here. What we're going to do is going to build up a base for our flash and our wing. This is where the three alt thread comes in handy, which is a thicker thread. And you can build up the uh, bulk much easier and fill up this space. With, with this skinnier thread, it takes more winds. Okay, that will put on our flash at this point. So what I'm going to do with the flash is I'm going to put some on each side. So we come with our bodkin and pick out, you know, three or four strands. You don't want to overdo it. Grab hold of them. Cut. Now we find the middle, which is about there. This stuff has static electricity. You'll find it. Sometimes easier just to give it a bit of moisture. Okay, so what we've done, we've got some there. I'm just going to bring this around to the other side. Now double check you've got it on both sides. Take a moment. You might have to do a little bit of a twist here to get them around. That's fine. And bring your bodkin and get all the strays out. There we go. Again, add some wines in here. Now, some of this is too long, so you just lift it out of the way. And I, I push like this so I don't get a, a blunt end. I get some ragginess to the way the ends are. So now we've got the flash. It extends just a little bit further past the uh, marabou. You want to make sure it's all the way around. Give it a twist if it's not all the way around. There we go. That looks good. And with the bodkin, straight back. Now, lastly, with the wing. Now, one of the things you get into with a uh, bucktail that can cause a problem is if you put on a thick clump, it can pull out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a thin clump to start with. cut off my piece of bucktail and I'm going to grab it by the tip and stroke out the, the skinny fibers that are uh, at the bottom, the base of it. You get these very long fibers and you get these very short fibers. The short fibers just add up bulk, so strip them out, get rid of them. So we, we size it and I'm just going to trim it. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in there with my fingers grab hold of it. I'm going to do a, a soft wrap and then I'm going to pull up another soft wrap and pull up. And I'll put some more wraps in here. Now if it's twisted around a little bit, take a moment to fix it. That happens. And you take your bodkin 
and split it on either side of the hook. There we go. Now I will just stroke all this back, put some wraps in here. Now what I'm going to do at this stage to help this stick is I'm going to add some CA glue. And uh, that way this thing is not going to come apart on us. So I'm now going to add some glue using the CA glue. And I'm going to put some more wraps in here. And this will bind that glue into the threads below it and into the bucktail. Just try to avoid getting it on your fingers. Now we can come in and add the second one. Like before, grab it by the tips, stroke out the short stuff. Trim the ends. When I say trim the ends, what I'm trying to do is get them all lined up. And then we just come in and again, some soft wraps pull up. Take a moment to move it around if it starts to shift. And those fibers that are close to the head, just bind those down. Again, we come in with our bodkin and split the hairs on either side of the hook. Now we're going to put a few wraps in here. And we'll add a little bit more CA glue. And take a moment to spread that around. This helps the durability of the jig. Helps to keep the bucktail from pulling out and I'll just build up the material here and what's happening is that those threads are biting into the glue and forcing it into the bucktail. Now we can just come in, make a couple of half hitches There we go. Once that glue sets up, you could coat it. You could coat this with some uh, nail polish afterwards to give it a nice sheen because the, the glue doesn't do a complete job of, you know, making that look nice. That's, that's, you know, something we can do. You don't have to. It depends on what you want to do in terms of making it look nice. I mean, I did this sort of a rough, quick one because I'm not trying to make an elegant looking jig. I just want something that's going to fish well and you know we're going to catch fish with it and if we lose it to the bottom I don't worry because if I put hours into a lovely jig and lose it onto the bottom on the first cast I'm not going to be a happy camper so that's why I do these roughly and quick because they're you know you lose a lot of them so there we go we can as I say throw some head cement on and it'll look great so there you go the minnow jig tied with uh, marabou so it'll move on a straight retrieve as well as being jigged if you wish uh, and you can fish along the bottom or you know mid current wherever you want to fish it so give it a try the minnow jig cheers